Once upon a time, when mom and dad were children and used to go sledding and jumping rope, all fairy tales were full of kindness, and lanterns were magical. Okay, Mike, you've had enough of video games already. Now we're going to watch a slideshow. Hold on, Kate, I will. But right now I'm being chased by a pack of dogs. A pack of dogs? And you're not afraid? Of course I'm not. But you were afraid of our neighbor's dog, Turbo. Yeah, because Turbo's real. Everyone is afraid of real dogs. Not everyone, actually. Sherlock Holmes isn't afraid of anything. Who is Sherlock Holmes? You're about to see. Switching on the magic lantern. The Evil Dog of the Baskervilles, based on a book by Arthur Conan Doyle. One day, Sir Baskerville looked very frightened and came to see the famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Strange things are going on in my castle. So Sherlock Holmes is a detective? Yes, and he's very famous. I hear a dog howling every night, and in the morning, I find dog tracks in every room. What is so strange about that? Asked the surprised Holmes. Oh, come on, Kate. That's so easy. The dog's howling because it's sad. And it leaves tracks on the ground because its paws are dirty. What's so strange about that? The thing is that I'm afraid of dogs. And I haven't got any dogs in my castle. No dogs at all? Then where did the tracks come from? Mike, don't you see? That's what's so strange about it. They went to the castle to solve the mystery immediately. Jack the guard met them in the castle. <gasps> there are no dogs in the castle. The master is afraid of them. Everybody knows that. Kate, doesn't he know about the tracks? Mike, watch. Don't interrupt. Sherlock Holmes looked around the castle, but he didn't find anything suspicious. Why don't you stay for the night? Sir Baskerville suggested to Holmes. I would never stay. And that's why he asked Sherlock Holmes to stay the night and not you, Mike. Later that night, Sherlock Holmes and Sir Baskerville were woken up by the awful howling of a dog. Oh, it's terrible, cried Sir Baskerville, and he hid under the blanket. Kate, would you mind speaking in a less scary voice? In the morning, dog tracks appeared in the corridors of the castle again. I don't want to stay here for even another minute, cried Sir Baskerville. So where's the dog hiding? Why can't anyone see it? Keep watching, Mike. Don't interrupt. Sherlock Holmes studied the tracks carefully. What a cool magnifying glass he's got. I need one like that. Dear Sir Baskerville, stay over in the castle for one more night, and the mystery of the Baskerville dog will be solved. Kate, could it be some kind of ghost? Look, Mike, first of all, ghosts don't leave footprints. And secondly, ghosts don't actually exist. That night, Sherlock Holmes and Sir Baskerville hid behind the curtain, waited, and watched. Wait, do they have a gun? At least a small one, just in case. Sherlock Holmes uses different methods. At midnight, they heard footsteps in the corridor, and soon a big dog appeared. I'm scared, whispered Sir Baskerville. Whoa, it's such a huge dog. But at that very moment, Holmes released a wind-up toy mouse from behind the curtain. It rolled across the floor, and an unbelievable thing happened. The dog arched its back, meowed, and rushed after the mouse. Wow, the dog is a cat? Sure didn't see that coming. Holmes lit the torch, and everyone saw it was Jack the guard in a dog costume. Jack, how could you do this to me? Said Sir Baskerville in surprise. It's Jack? The guard? That sure is a surprise. I wanted so much for the castle to be mine, cried Jack. I wanted to frighten Sir Baskerville. 
so that he would leave the castle for good. <coughs> He's mean. He's supposed to guard, not frighten people. Oh my goodness, Jack. We'll have to leave forever now, said Sir Baskerville. And a new guard was hired for the castle, one that he could trust. So, Mike, are you still afraid of dogs? Only Turbo, just a little bit. Oh, I get it. And I'm pretty sure that Turbo would want to haunt your castle. Right, Sir Mike?